Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Okay. Uh, in the previous uh, session, we have uh, discussed about uh, uh, the definition and right. Uh, today's session, we will discuss about uh, types of commercial banks. Right, when you look at uh, the types of commercial bank, we you know the commercial bank is uh, one type of bank. Again, uh, we will discuss here. Uh, so within commercial bank, uh, there are many types. So that's what we are going to discuss. Uh, we can uh, uh, divide the commercial banks based on two bases. Uh, first one on the basis of the system and second one on the basis of structure. So based on the uh, system, the commercial bank can be divided into a deposit bank, investment bank and a mixed bank. So this is the fun this is the uh, types of commercial bank based on the system. And uh, based on the structure, uh, especially ownership structure, and uh, based on uh, the corporate structure of the bank, it can be divided into unit bank, branch banking, group banking, chain banking, correspondent banking. Now we'll discuss one by one. We'll start from deposit bank. Deposit banking. Uh, commercial bank, right? In the commercial bank uh, normally accept deposits. When we look at, when we discuss about commercial bank, a special feature, a unique feature is accepting demand deposit. Demand deposit means they are maintaining current account. The maintaining current account is the unique feature of commercial bank. The major activity of commercial bank is to accept deposits from the public, which is repayable on demand. You know, the current account, uh, current account has a special feature than other uh, account uh, the saving account and other fixed account so if when the customer put their money on the on the account if it is a large amount uh, when customer withdraw the money the bank requests a time to uh, withdraw the money to settle that money from our customer from their customers but in case of demand deposits the current account the current account for current account normally banks not pay any interest anyhow at the time of request by the depositor through a check they have to release the money so that is the special feature of uh, of current account the major activity of the commercial bank is to accept deposit from the public which is repayable on demand on demand mean at the time of the request at the time of the withdrawal and to provide loan and advances through available resources so the commercial banks makes money using the deposits of its customers and their money will be used to provide loan and advances that loan and advances will earn profit will earn profit so this system of attracting deposit to mobilize resources from the purpose of short term lending and can be a term as short term banking right uh, normally the commercial banks uh, uh, give loan on short term basis not a long term basis especially the bank overdraft bank OD 
it's a major source of income of commercial banks. So this system attracting deposit to mobilize resources. You know, it is the circulating money. It's circulating money. So business people uh, use check. They put 30 days, right? Uh, 60 days. So it, it's give it a time. So this check facilitate to rotate the resources. It's kind of credit, you no? Know? Writing checks is kind of credit. Rather than paying money, they are giving check for 30 days. It's mean the 30 days credit. So it's facilitate the economy to mobilize the credit. They move the resources. So the system is the system of attracting deposit to mobilize resources from for the purpose of short-term lending. So uh, banks accepting banks accept uh, deposit from customers, and by using that money, the bank will give that money to the customers on for loan basis for loan as a loan and for interest. So it helps to mobilize. So it collect deposits. It means collect money from who have excess money and take all the money and they distribute the money as a loan and make money. It's so it's a mobilize the money. So it helps to efficient uh, market. So here the bank uh, is act as an intermediary. So short term lending. So this uh, this short term lending can be termed as short term banking. The commercial banks are normally providing short term loans, not twenty years, fifteen years long, right? So this system gives importance of the fact that commercial bank accept deposit repayable on demand. Repayable on demand means especially they are focused on current account. They act the commercial bank, the deposit banking act as a trustee. For the hard-earned money of large number of depositors, you know who deposit money on current account, who deposit on saving account. Normally, the hard earners, hard earners. So they earn some amount of money, the portion of the money they spend for their life, and the balance will be deposited into the bank. So why people put money on the bank? Uh, the people are re realize realize that the banks are safe. Banks are the bank is the safe place to keep their money. So the banks function as a trustee. So uh, they act as a trustee for the hard-earned money of a large number of depositors. Deposit banking is thus justified only when the following conditions are present. Deposit banking. First, the banks banks can confine them, themselves to deposit banking only when there is a financial machinery to meet the fixed capital requirement. So to uh, make money, to accept deposit from the customer, they have to have enough capital requirement. They have to have capital requirement. And uh, they are unable to rely totally on deposits of customers. To function as a deposit bank and uh, to make money using the deposits, they should have enough uh, fixed capital requirement. So banks can confine themselves to deposit banking only when there is a financial machinery to meet the fixed capital requirement. Banks which have lesser capital, banks which have lesser capital and reserve cannot acquire long-term assets or speculative or risky or non-negotiable securities which can not be easily converted in the case in emergency. No, uh, if if the bank does not have enough capital requirement, so they are unable to uh, give long term loans. So, if they don't have enough capital, what they do normally? So they try to use a deposit. If they use all deposit to make money as loan, 
when the customers ask for money deposit ask for money so how can they make money so how can they get in, can settle the money how can this bank survive so if they want uh, long term assets capital assets how can they purchase speculative how they can do speculative businesses type of businesses speculative type of transactions how can they take risk and uh, non negotiable securities you know uh, bill of exchange how can they discount bills which cannot be easily converted into cash in emergency so if they don't have enough capital what will happen they are unable to survive so to main, maintain own capital rather than borrowed capital right so own the the deposit bank should have enough own capital equity capital they not totally relies on deposits they can't use all deposit to make money right so it's it's trade off so if, in summary uh, to function as a commercial bank as well, they should have enough capital capital so in form of uh, equities in form of own capital now we move to investment banking investment banking so uh, these are the financing institutions these are the financing institutions institutes which provide long term finance long term finance to business corporations and the government organization the business corporations and government organization now you know uh, uh, banks give loan to corporations business business organization so in large scale right not uh, in thousands not in lakhs here the commercial banks give loan in million billion rupees of money to the government to the organization right this is the major function of investment banking they provide loan generally they purchase the entire issue of new shares and bond of business corporations corporates or government bodies and resell them to the public so in companies uh, issue shares to raise capital especially ipo companies not sell all the all assets all equities to the shareholders to the new shareholders to the market even when government sell bond securities to the public initially normally the banks will purchase that securities when company issue shares the company the banks will purchase that shares and resell to the general public resell to the customer the public so it's kind of intermediary services and underwriting services underwriting of shares so 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 this bank helps this type of banks helps to business organization right in the way of giving loan giving large amount of loan and at the time of share issue they purchase major part of the shares so in this way the banks helps to the organization as well as the government so it's this is this type of uh, bank activity is called investment banking but in uh, deposit banking so it's mainly focus on uh, collected deposit from the general public general public and they provide a short term loan short term loan so in deposit banking they are focusing on especially what uh, overdraft them overdraft and term loans but here we focus on long term loan and the loan provided to the uh, business organization and government in large scale the operation the operational technique of the investment banks bankers as follows preliminary negotiation you know say for example uh, say for example a company or xyz company going to get loan or they want 
uh, they want to issue some share securities so they investment banking all the times they are uh, deal with large organizations uh, government right so it's not like uh, individual banking right our public no not that not that it's a corporate banking corporate it's dealing these dealings are mainly in com with companies so it's a, it's a technique first uh, preliminary negotiation if xyz company want money they want to issue loan uh, bond or if they want a loan so they will negotiate the company will negotiate with bank this is the first step step one and uh, the bank will request a detailed report seek detailed report the third step the nature and types of product produced and they will study about the what what is the nature of nature and type of product produced by the company and and then it sees it check check out the conditions of planned machinery planned machinery and other assets so for the purpose of mortgage in the case of mortgage so and uh, in case of security for security purpose they will check the condition of the planned planned machinery and other assets its capital structure whether is uh, whether it's have equity finance enough equity finance or capital uh, loan finance debt finance like that as the object of the new issue right and opinion of expert technicians and professional accountants they will take a kind of confidential report from experts about that company in case if the company is going to issue new shares they will get a report from the auditor as a professional accountant and originate originator enters into agreement if all things satisfied there, there will be a, an agreement between the bank and the particular company so this is uh, coming under the investment banking it's not like uh, retail banking i think not it's not retail banking it's a, a kind of investment banking uh, dealing with uh, companies and governments and uh, mixed banking mixed it combines both it combines deposit banking and investment banking you no know, deposit banking focus on uh, collecting deposits collecting demand deposit and giving a short term loan and uh, investment banking focus on uh, giving loan and make investment on companies provide support to companies and government so this is uh, investment banking and uh, a mixed banking is a mix of two it have it has both deposit and investment bank in the essence of mixed banking consists in attracting deposits you no know, it's attract except deposit attract deposit from the general public and it providing short term medium term and long term capital to the industries to the industries so industries include uh, uh, major customers businesses major organizations they they accept uh, deposits collect money from the customers and they use the deposit to make loan to the industries large scale organization and small scale organization especially for industry development under the mixed banking system banks play a major role in industrial development of the nation it's very important the, the investment banking portion is very important the banking system is basically compromised of deposit banking but in addition to it undertake the risk of meeting heavy capital uh, requirement of industry right. so the accepting deposit is not a simple task but invest make investment heavily make heavy investment on businesses are uh, risky one high risk so financing on risky business projects helps to national economic development right they accept deposit and by using the deposit 
the the bank to provide financial support to the organizations now we move uh, the type of commercial banking based on the structure based on structure the deposit banking and uh, investment banking mixed banking is based on their system now we move to the structure type of commercial banks basis or based on this structure in this system now we move uh, we are discussing about unit banking unit mean one single unit banking in this system the banking corporations banks are carried to, uh, carried through a single office and confined a particular area uh it's called what uh, it does not have any branches it does not have island by island wide branches it it function in particular town or in a particular city you couldn't find a similar bank in other the same bank in other cities it's not like other banks say hnb you can find hnb in colombo in kandy ampara jaffna where we can find that is not a unit bank because it has many branches if it is a unit bank you couldn't find a bank in other places for example uh, a bank of ampara so it operates only in ampara you couldn't find bank of ampara in colombo or gold or wherever right so that is uh, what this is the system the banking corporations are carried out carry out their businesses through a single office and confined to a particular area the bank maintains no branches in some exceptional cases the bank is allowed to have branch within a limited area within a limited area it, don't, it does not have it does not have wide range of banks but rather it has only uh, a limited it operates in a limited area the size of the bank and capital is limited in size and uh, the capital is not in large scale right? it's like what uh, uh right so it's kind of what banking business by a particular organization in, in a particular area the size of the bank and capital is limited the unique uh, feature of unit banking system is the correspondent banking system we will discuss about the correspond correspondent banking system so corresponding banking system is an idea right uh, correspond so a bank it's a unit bank you know it is uh, not a large one it's a small one and it's operate business in a small a particular area and uh, it so therefore it does not have a proper security system to the bank so therefore that bank deposit the bank will deposit their money in a large bank in that area so for example bank of ampara it may deposit their money in hnb or commercial bank or sambat bank or people's bank so if the uh, bank of ampara is deposit money in the hnb then the bank of ampara is correspondent bank for the hnb okay. the unique feature of this of unit banking system is the corresponding banking system whenever the bank of ampara need money it will withdraw from uh, withdraw from the hnb so this is a single example for the correspondent thing that's a system uh, unit banking refers to a simple usually very small bank that provide financial services to the local community not in wide range local community typically a unit bank is independent and operates without any connecting bank or branches in the area 
it does not have any internet uh, bank online banking system because it does not need to, it serves in a particular area uh, advances advantages advantages of uh, unit banking system quick decision quick decision and it you know it no need to wait for the approval from the head office or regional manager or the area manager no need the management the management of a particular unit bank can take decisions very quickly economy of small scale of operation economy of small scale of operation and the personal contact right it's running based on their personal contact and this is what advantages of in unit banking what are the disadvantages personal contact a risk so the manager knows that person because the banks are operating in that community you know so the managers ah mr x is come so he is known very well known to me so he want money okay i will give money i can sanction the loan to them to him it's kind of uh, is, this is their personal contact right uh, the person is known to me therefore i sanction send the loan sanction the loan to that particular person sometime the person may dishonor this one idea they may or some time he may disappear limited financial resources that it can give a loan a small scale not a large scale economic changes can its impact economic changes can its impact you know uh, the bank give loan to the local society in case of a tsunami or earthquake earthquake and the landslip and the corona flood due to that the area may be affected very severely and the bank gives loan to them they are unable to collect so what to do if it is a not if it is a branch banking it does it has lot of branches island wide even if uh, one area affected they can get support from other branches but in this case it helpless if community affected due to some reasons economic changes low economic development period or high inflation period or uh, downtrend economic moves so survival is question it's like a what retail shop hmm? branch banking branch so in our day to day life we are dealing with branch bank branch so uh, people's bank bank of sloan hnb commercial bank ndb everything is coming under branch bank because it has these banks have lot of branches island wide so this is a system where the banking business is carries a single bank with a network of branches throughout the length breadth of the country we can find branches of boc everywhere we can find branches of hnb commercial bank so it's a branch banking it's running the business branches by establishing many branches i don't why the affairs of the branch are directly uh, the the affairs the activities of the branch are directed instructed managed by the branch manager accordance with the regulations and policies of the head office head office formulated policies rules regulations the branch manager should follow that rules and regulations even though he is the branch manager the instructions he should he should work he should work under the construct under the instruction of uh, head office each bank is the single entity owned by a group of shareholders and centralized by a group of directors each bank is a single entity owned by 
a group of shareholders and centralized by a group of directors. You know, HNB, it's a, a large corporation. So all HNB banks are belongs to the shareholders, and it has a group of directors, board of directors. So each bank is a single entity owned by right HNB. Even though it has lot of branches, but HNB is a one entity. HNB is a one entity. BOS is one entity. Sambat Bank is one entity. But it has so many branches. So only one bank. Each bank is a single entity. Even though the bank has three hundred branches, all island wide, it's in HNB. It's a single entity, or it's a commercial bank. We not say commercial bank, Colombia, commercial bank, Colombo. No, it's a commercial bank. Branch is Col branch at Colombo, branch at Colombo, branch at Ampara. So each bank is single entity owned by a group of shareholders and centralized by a group of directors. Now, will let us discuss about advantages of branch banking. Economic of large scale of oper operations. So the operation is a large scale. Economy of reserves. They have enough reserves. Remittance facilities. Remittance. You can uh, transfer money from Colombo branch to Candy branch. If it's the same bank, we can get the money very quickly due to the internet. Uh, connectivity and greater stability greater stability if one branch face troubles another branch will help the bank so greater stability and reducing interest rate disparities reducing interest rate disparity so due to a branch banking we can find branches everywhere almost same bank if uh, commercial bank fixed interest rate at Colombo uh, 10 percent, even in Jaffna 10 percent, Wabunia 10 percent, Mana 10 percent, Gold 10 percent. But if it's a different bank, in case of unit banking, Colombo is in a separate rate, or Colombo is a separate rate, Gold is a separate rate, a different rate, right? So there are so many disparities of interest rate in unit banking system, but in branch bank system, all are standardized. So therefore, it reducing interest rate disparities, quick expansion of branches, spreading of risk, enhanced profitability, enhanced profitability. So it, if, it, if the bank have a last, the large amount of branches it's mean it have large amount of depositors large amount of uh, large number of uh, loan borrowers so they can make profit what are the disadvantage lack of personal knowledge lack of personal knowledge so manager today is working here so after three years he may work at colombo a new place and after two years, he may work to another place, and he may he may does not recognize the people in a society in the society. So the lack of personal knowledge. If new customer comes, the manager does not knows the detail of the of the customers. So lack of effective control. It's all the control coming from head office. Delay and red tapeism. Right, delay they have to wait until the instruction come from the head office uh, create monopoly power and uh, effect of bank failure on the economy so imagine if one bank uh, collapsed what will happen bankruptcy insolvent what will happen so we have discussed much more detail in the second chapter and stability we have discussed in a deeper manner so we have you can understand well now we move to uh, a group banking 
group banking so it's a different uh, right it's a, a different kind of uh, structure so group banking can be also refer to the control that the company has over two or more financial institutions group banking so this system aims to increase the efficiency in banking operation with a, a degree in operational cost so, so it's a different concept right the term group of bank uh, the term group banking refers to bringing two or more banks under a single control and management single control and management so for example uh, assume that uh, a board of directors a single board of director directors may control people's bank hnb commercial bank imagine okay so, these are not branches so two so group banks is simply uh, two or more banks two or more entities two or more entities are controlled by a single body single body so the control the remote the control is one right the head office is one but there are entities so imagine the consolidation the first holding company and subsidiary like that uh, so in the in holding company each subsidiary is an, an entity separate separate entities likewise a group banking uh, each subsidiary is each bank for example um, valuable one i think it's a holding company under this valuable one there are uh, some companies some but bank or bank i'm not sure right this is the concept right the term a group banking refers to bringing two or more banks under a single control and management right here uh, for example uh, xyz holding xyz holding under xyz holding company uh, bank a is one entity bank b is another entity bank c is another entity so but there is no relationship between bank a and bank b because these banks are not branches these banks are independent entities they are independent entities each others but the control of a bank a bank b bank c in the hand of a one body control body single control and management group banking enjoys economic of scales extensive customer services greater mobility efficient management right the group banking system also faces supervisory problems risk of speculation and manipulation restriction on healthy competition there are some problems in sri lanka it's very it's uh, it's hard to find this kind of grouping but i in my knowledge hmm, i think there are few right so group banking can also refer the control that a company has over two or more finance institutions like uh, keep in your mind it's like what uh, consolidated accounts merge and acquisition right a holding company manages uh, entities separate separate entities different different entities chain banking it's uh, like uh, group banking right so group banking uh, it's a different concept this is basically developed over the group banking system so the chain banking is coming from the group banking system chain banking here the chain banking is a form a bank governance in which individuals or an entity takes control of at least three banks that are independently chartered it is not like branch banking or group banking because 
banks within such a system are separately owned are not part of the same entity right earlier we talked about the group banking uh, the bank a bank b bank c are belongs to a particular organization a particular host company but chain banking here uh, the bank a bank b a bank c are same uh, it's an independent entities but there are some coordinations here uh, here unlike group banking the power the power are not vested in a holding company but vested in a single person single person by the same group of persons the ownership of stocks throughout common membership of board of directors or otherwise it does not have a holding company so does you know holding company but the owner may be a single person the power is vested to a single person of these different types of uh, different uh, banks their internal group shall control the member bank right so each bank have their own manager he will control the bank this bank uh, coming under the group are called chain bank it's a different concept right chain bank is a form of bank uh, governance so the management kind of a different managed bank management in which individuals a person individual or an entity takes control of at least three banks that are independently chartered it is not like branch banking or group banking because banks within such a system separately owned and not part to the same entity so that is chain banking respondent banking respondent bank so this refers to the linking banks through deposits right as i told you earlier uh, bank of ampara deposit money hnb ampara the bank of ampara is a unit bank small scale bank small bank it does not have enough proper system to safeguard their money safeguard their deposit therefore the bank of ampara for example they put, put the deposit the money in hnb ampara or commercial bank or some other banks so in this case the bank of ampara is a correspondent bank so this refers to a linking bank through uh, through deposits regional banks or small banks operating in a smaller locate localities will deposit their cash reserves in a big bank bigger bank or nearby city banks the smaller bank is called respondent bank the bank who will deposit the money into the another bank is called respondent bank where as the major banks who hold the deposit for the smaller one is called correspondent bank right the hnb is a correspondent bank and the respondent bank is a small in the unit bank for example right i told uh, in other way right so it's the correct way is the smaller bank the bank the which bank is deposit the money in the large bank the small bank is called respondent bank the large bank for example the money is deposited in the hnb then hnb is the correspondent bank hence the system of banking result in connecting all the unit over the country virtual banking it's like online banking or digital banking mobile banking atm cash deposit machines right so all these kind of functions are coming under the virtual banking so virtual banks denotes so it does not come under the system or uh, structure so, right it's a new concept uh, virtual banking virtual banks denotes the provision of banking and related services 
through extensive use of information technology without direct resource to the bank by the customer. The origin of virtual banking in the developed countries can be traced back to the 70s, 1970s, with the installation of automated telemachine ATMs. The virtual banking service include ATMs, shared ATM network, electronic fund transfer point of sale, EPEFTPOS, electronic fund transfer point of sale, smart cards, stored value card, phone banking, mobile banking, and more recently internet and internet banking, all this coming under the virtual banking. Universal banking, no? you can get all the services in one group. Normally we get like that, no? When you visit the Sambad Bank or Senon Bank, you can get all the services. You can deposit money, you can withdraw money, you can take loan, you can put a pawning, you can make a transaction, all the services you can get. So it's called universal bank. All the facilities you can find, all in one. So universal banking refers to providing all financial under one roof. These include long-term loan to the industries, especially investment banking, venture capital underwriting, brokerage, corporate advisory services, insurance, and so on. So if you find all the services in a single bank, it's called universal banking. So it, it has an individual class activities. First briefly explain the following terms in banking system. So you briefly explain the bank, the banker and his duties, banking services, types of customers, duties of customers in banks, bank employees and their duties, customer internet, customers interest in bank, modern banking and advantages to the customer. So it's up to you. So we unable to conduct a physical class. Therefore, uh, I give it, I leave this to you. Mm. And uh, why is an institution called a bank? List out the banks of Sri Lanka based on the function. Explain the functions which, which a modern bank performs. Write the procedure to open new bank in Sri Lanka. So it's up to you, right? So if you do uh, this activity, you can, definitely you can get a further knowledge. Now we'll look at the functions of the bank. Up to now we have discussed about what uh, uh, types of commercial banks. Now we discuss about functions of bank. So we can divide the functions of the bank into two, that is a primary, primary functions and secondary function. Under the primary function, uh, it has accepting deposits. Under the accepting deposits, a saving deposit, fixed deposits, current deposits, uh, recurring deposits and grinding advances the kind of loan so it has overdraft case credit loan discounts of bills so when you look at the secondary function so agency function transfer of funds periodic payments collection of checks portfolio management periodic collection other agency functions and unitary functions utility functions so you can draft uh, lockers, safety locker system, underwriting of shares, bonds, project reports, social welfare programs, other utility functions. A primary functions of banks. So these primary function of banks are explained below. Accepting deposits, you know, uh, I don't want to explain much, right, as you know, this basic concept, and I have explained in detail in the first or second chapters. So accepting deposits, the banks collect deposit from a public 
this deposit can be different types saving deposit so this type of deposit encourages saving habits among the public the rate of interest is low at present and the present is about four percent or four to six percent for deposit per annum withdrawal of deposit are allowed subject to a certain restriction if you have in your account 5000 rupees you are unable to take you can't unable to you are unable to withdraw this 5000 at a time so it keeps 1000 rupees minimum balance or 500 rupees like that so that is some uh, requirements restriction so this account is suitable to salary and wage earners so this account can be opened in a single name or joint names fixed deposits so a lump sum, a, a particular amount of money is deposited into the bank for a period of time at a specified interest rate. So a lump sum amount is deposited at one time for a specific period, higher rate of interest is paid, which varies with the period of deposit. Withdrawals are not allowed before the expiry of the period. Uh, those who have surplus fund to go for fixed deposits. And the current deposit. This type of account is operated by businessmen. Withdrawals are freely allowed. No interest is paid. In fact, there are service charges. So the account holder can get the benefit of overdraft facility. So recurring deposits. So you in a particular interval, time interval, you promise to deposit a, a certain amount every month or every week so 10,000 every month every month 10,000 he should deposit that's called one recurring deposits this type of account is operated by salaried person and petty traders the certain sum of money is periodically deposited into the bank withdrawals are permitted only after the expiry of certain period a higher rate of interest is paid a granting loan and advances the bank advances uh, a loan to the business community and other members of the public the rate charge is higher than what is paid on deposits so this is how the banks make money so the types of bank loan and advances are overdraft od bank od overdraft this type of advances are given to current account holders. No separate account is maintained. All entries are made in the current account. A certain amount is sanctioned as overdraft, which can be withdrawn within a certain period of time, say three months or so. Interest is charged on actual amount withdrawn. And overdraft facility is branded against collateral security. It is sanctioned to businessmen and firms. And case credit is kind of a loan, short term loan. So the client is allowed to uh, cash credit up to a specified uh, limit fixed in advance. It can be given to the current account holders as well as to others who do not have an account with bank. Separate cash credit account is maintained, interest is charged on the amount withdrawn in excess of limit the case credit is given against the security of tangible assets and of guarantees the advance is given for a long period and large amount of loan is sanctioned that of overdraft right? it's a when compared with overdraft uh, in case credit uh, it uh, high amount and a long period not the 20 to 15 years right it's a comparatively it's longer than the overdraft loan it is normally for short term nowadays banks do not do lend money for long term repayment of uh, money can be in the form of installment spread over a period of time or in lump sum amount interest is charged on actual amount sanctioned whether the withdrawn or not the rate of interest may be slightly lower than what is charged or not 
on overdraft and debits. So discounting of bills. Discounting of bills. Uh, the bank can advance money by discounting or by purchasing bill of exchange both domestic and foreign bills. So the bank pays the bill amount to the drawer or the beneficiary of the bill by deducting usual discount charges. On maturity, the bill is presented to the drawee or acceptor of the bill and the amount is collected. So it's a simple thing you can understand easily. Now we look at the second two functions. So agency functions. We can uh, the bank helps to transfer of funds, bank fund transfer, collection of check, periodic payments, portfolio management, periodic collections, and other agency functions. So general utility functions. Uh, issue a draft, letter of credit, locker facility, a safety locker facility, underwriting of shares, a dealing in foreign currency, foreign exchange, project report, a social welfare programs, and other utility functions. And uh, next, we will discuss about uh, history of banking and 